Thank you so much for your introduction. It's a real pleasure to be with you all here today. Um, I'd love today to talk about three things. First of all, uh, lessons learned while building AI interfaces for patients. We've been doing this already for uh, roughly four years. Second of all, how um, voice AI could make a real change in people's lives and help them in daily treatment. And third of all, about some of the recent lessons learned and our huge company changes and how we went from being a tech product to a services company and why I really think that in order to make a change in healthcare, you in most cases have to be a, a services company. So it all started uh, from in, in the time when I was still a medical student. The very beginning of this story is when I went to my first summer clerkship at the Department of Cardiology. And at that time, it was like uh, late 2015, uh, I've noticed how many patients are having troubles with keeping to what their doctor told them to do uh, when they're being discharged from the hospital and they go home. And I realized that there's no really any kind of efficient and a good solution to keep them in the loop and follow up remotely. So I understood that there's a need for a totally new type of interface. And so, um, as you sure know, that's the case in most countries around the globe. Unplanned readmissions are a huge problem for both sides, for the patient, as nobody likes to get, to get back to, to the hospital, and also for um, healthcare systems producing huge costs. Uh, the first way of tackling this problem uh, was a very basic one. It was a typical startup stage uh, developed in a garage. So we created uh, first uh, line of cubes. We call them cardio cubes as they were mostly in, in the beginning for uh, cardio patients. And so they were making notifications about uh, taking pills, doing measurements, uh, and all sorts of basic things through our own customly created hardware and software. And we realized that this project, uh, project makes a lot of sense when one of our patients said, I felt that Dr. Oscar is with me at home and he would be sad if I don't take my pills on a daily basis. We've noticed that a patient can really form um, a bond, a relationship uh, with just a white box uh, with notifications. So we said how to make, uh, make it work both sides and how to allow for a two-side communication. That was the moment when we realized that the uh, smart speaker market is growing really, really fastly. And right now, currently, it's over 1 billion uh, devices that provide a voice um, assistant access today. So we said, let's focus purely on the software part and use uh, consumer devices. And so uh, the idea from the very beginning was uh, let's deploy, uh, we started with Amazon Echoes. So Amazon Echoes with Alexa to patients' homes with our software working on top of them. So they'll be able to have daily conversations and daily check-ins uh, with the robot, with our AI. And then all this data will be gathered and sent back to the hospital and will be part of the so-called patient note inside of the um, electronic medical record. So doctor can um, access this data, uh, see how this patient is doing, and also react faster if there's any kind of uh, worsening trend. As all doctors love, we then created uh, several clinical trials. Uh, the first one already in, in the US was um, uh, conducted together with Cedar sinai Hospital and their outpatient cardiology clinic located in uh, Beverly Hills in California. And so we had a variety of patients in different age groups uh, from 20 uh, something up to 90 years old and the elderly uh, patients we were able to, to uh, enroll to the trial. And interestingly, that was one of the biggest aha moments. Uh, the elderly the patients were, the more they were interested to talk on a daily basis with uh, our voice AI system and reported uh, medical history on a daily or weekly basis. We had two major outcomes out of this study. The first one uh, was uh, that we reached a 
uh, percent of accuracy rate, meaning that we can uh, take medical history as accurately as uh, human beings do. And that CardioCube can then collect, index, and document this medical data all using a, a voice interface. And second one. Second one was kind of more from the section of uh, user stories and what people wanted it to, uh, to do in their daily lives. And so many people said, it's great for cardiology. It's great for controlling my um, congestive heart failure, but I'd like also to use it for my full patient journey for refills or referrals. So we said, how to go to the next step, how to make our software be uh, like one part with the daily lives. So it works just, you know, as great as uh, playing Spotify on your Alexa or ordering Uber. These are like the top two features used right now on smart speakers. We said, let's make those consumer devices also have a healthcare meaning, a totally new meaning. And that's how we started our uh, very successful partnership with Family Care Network. Uh, that is the uh, biggest independent family medicine uh, group in the U.S., providing care to over 100,000 uh, patients in the state of Washington. And while doing this, we were totally aware of the fact that working on a bigger scale means uh, also you know, a lot of things to consider. So from number one, analyzing the uh, current status of the product and asking FDA if we need any other uh, approvals or registrations. Uh, number two, understanding the uh, the how the situation is complex and that we have to integrate with the EMR and with a lot of other uh, systems from other stakeholders like payers. And last thing, uh, we were dealing with a user profile, as said before, uh, just as at, at the trial in Cedar sinai for people from 18 years old up to 80 or 90. And also we had to understand that uh, at the very core of the uh, primary curve, we have to remember that it's relationship-based, not just transaction-based. And that's you know, also a huge difference from uh, going to, uh, to a specialist when you just see a given doctor once. And in the case of primary care, we wanted the system to always be with the patient and try to be um, his friend on a, on a daily basis. And from the business perspective, we tackled uh, three big problems. Number one, costs, healthcare costs are uh, bigger and bigger each year, especially in the US. Number two, access. A lot of people differ from contacting providers as uh, they sometimes don't know what to do as the next step, or maybe it's actually also the cost of making this visit that's keeping them um, a way of, of going to, to the clinic or making the call. And thirdly, inefficiencies. I know that inefficiencies are a very broad term, uh, especially in terms of, of healthcare, but um, we wanted to target especially those that are administrative and that could be solved by uh, taking the AI and help with the most basic, th basic things from uh, patient reminders, patient check-in, and also the whole suite of integrations on the provider um, side, helping with the most mundane tasks. And so we first of all implemented what was really already uh, tested to uh, a very high extent. So our congestive heart failure uh, treatment program. We then also implemented a diabetic curve. There's a really growing, growing uh, number of patients also in the younger demographic. And as the third part, we also implemented automated check-ins so that patient can check in and uh, give the full medical history while still sitting at their home one day before uh, the scheduled appointment. Uh, doctors using this system uh, started to love it. Uh, that's just one of the comments we, we had from Dr. Honey, who said, this project has the potential to transform the way patients interact with their medical care providers. And I hope we, we're gonna scale with that. And then, and then we had March, March 2020, we all know what happened then and how the pandemic has escalated around the globe. And we then understood uh, our third uh, lesson uh, learned during, during our four-year journey that uh, in order to make a real change uh, in healthcare, uh, it's much easier to be uh, and to do that 
being a services company than just one tech puzzle fitting to uh, or like to the big picture and to, to the jigsaw that you have. Uh, you can see on this slide the amount of uh, searches on, that's on Google, but same happened on all other um, search engines that people had with the uh, keyword virtual urgent care or virtual care. We understood that we also need to help patients uh, getting uh, care whenever they want to. And so uh, we, during this, uh, this path, we had a lot of, and during the pandemic, a lot of requests from uh, my fellow founders and other startup uh, and other entrepreneurs or startup founders asking me, where can I get help for my, my employees uh, and my team, especially when they're being locked in their homes and I don't know how they're doing. So uh, that's why we conducted um, a study with over 150 uh, companies, especially from the small and medium sized uh, market, so-called SMBs. And it turned out that their uh, key four things, four problems they're struggling with. The first one being virtual urgent care for their employees. The second one um, being the continuity of care. So seeing the same provider on uh, all appointments for this given patient and, and member. Um, also, uh, one of the biggest things was that uh, they had the concern how to help their uh, employees uh, with, the, uh, with annual checkups and preventive care. So all those things taken together uh, made us to make a very next, very ambitious next step that was uh, also developing uh, like the full medical back office and backbone of the service. And that's how we uh, became a healthcare services company. And we right now providing uh, virtual healthcare to uh, mainly employers in the US to help their um, employees. And so uh, that happens through just paying a very um, low fee. There are no deductibles, no co-pays. And uh, we thought, how to make people uh, want to make the contact from their side. So let's give them the possibility of having unlimited visits and also getting prescriptions being sent to uh, the pharmacy of their choice. Uh, when it comes to uh, smaller organizations, um, as we know that really well, as we're still, still regarded as typical SMB, uh, life changes pretty, pretty quick for an entrepreneur. So we said, let's give them the uh, flexibility they need so they can uh, scale up or down the contract on a um, weekly or monthly basis, just like it's as easy as taking really a new desk at, at WeWork. And then we added the full suite of voice AI services we built for chronic disease patients before. And that's how you have um, three different use cases here on the slide, uh, going from a typical uh, uh, virtual urgent care use case where somebody may have a headache and be nauseous to somebody who is having higher blood glucose levels and may need some, some consultation. And to a third use case, when somebody is planning some bigger goal, long distance goal, like for instance, running a marathon. And in all those use cases, those members um, have the possibility of doing this through a web-based platform and having a call with a provider, human being. Um, also doing this uh, with like triage or uh, continuous contact through a uh, smart speaker with our voice AI system and connecting all of the peripheral devices as well. So we have, and the doctors have, and the cardiac health team has a full uh, spectrum of, of knowledge of what's happening with this given patient and member. And that just all starts from $20 per member per month. Um, I'd love to share with you as one of the last things, uh, a great chart is representing um, the data of one of our patients. Uh, it's shown from uh, March uh, 2020 to July. So in the course of over five, um, five months, our system detected uh, nine alarms helping to prevent unnecessary ER visits and, and hospital admits. Uh, in the case of, of this very patient. And what you can see is this patient's weight. Yeah. Um, I'd like to end with a quote from Tom Castles that you for sure know, who is the president from, from Rock Health, uh, who said that 
overcoming COVID-19 will reinforce that healthcare cannot go back to a time when virtual or automated care was not normal operating procedure. I think the same. I think that the world has changed and that's why it's so important to give more affordable and accessible care to patients. Thank you.